How long did it take you to get used to talking during streams? It's so uncomfy for me. Um, it took a very long time. In fact, I would argue, Brain Blast, that I have been bad for three years and only in the last year or so did something click or something was adjusted or I watched a video. I can't tell you exactly what it was, but then I really stopped thinking about playing the games and started thinking, oh, you know what it was? I watched a tutorial on radio broadcasting because DJs, they kind of have a harder time than streamers, right? Because you can't see them. There is no gameplay to keep the audience's attention while the audio is coming through. It's, it is a pure art form of audio only. And you know that on radio, there can be no dead air. In fact, that's one of the rules that they discuss. It's no dead air. So what I did was I got super organized. I started treating my stream like, you know, a, a mini, I don't want to say a concert. It's not a concert, um, but it's an event, right? Every single stream is an event. It's like putting on a show or a play. That would be more apt. And um, I take all the rules that I learned from radio, from watching tutorials, and I just apply them. Because at the end of the day, even if the gameplay is trash, which as you can see it clearly, look, it's just me jumping around in circles. There's nothing to watch here. But that's that's not really why you guys are hanging out. You, you know, we're here to, to interact, right? Um, so I, I realized baseline rule of thumb. If no one is in the stream, because that's where a lot of people start, you have no one watching you, you're just talking about what you're doing. So I'm walking around and I mean, it's like what I've done so far in all these games that we've played where I don't actually know how to play. I'm just kind of observing things like neutral is handing me heavy ordnance. A guy is running around on all fours. You basically just say what you're thinking and you're going to sound pretty goofy most of the time. Like it's just going to be nonsense, but that's okay because Part of being an entertainer or being a broadcaster is just not really caring about those sorts of things. In fact, I'd say most of the acting classes I took spent more time on breaking down inhibition and caring about outside perception and less time on technique, which I'm kind of grateful for because I'm not a naturally confident person. There's tools that I'm employing every day or like reframings that I do to just act like a moron while I'm live. And yeah, people will, will make fun of you for it. Like if you post shorts, if you post videos, if you go live, you get jerks that join the chat or jerks that leave comments. And you just have to convince yourself that that is kind of par for the course. And so that doesn't really matter anymore. You're just focusing on practicing the skill. Like with Tony Hawk, there's an expectation you're gonna get injured, right? Like if you try a trick enough times, you're gonna get injured. And obviously getting injured feels different from getting, you know, like a personal attack, like you look ugly or, you know, I don't like the way your hair is or you talk funny, but you just got to think of those as the same thing. You're going live every day. The chances of you getting crap is going to increase. And so when you skate every day, the chances of you breaking a bone increases, but you know, that doesn't stop you from skating. You just keep, keep doing it. Um, par for the course, right? So you just set a goal every stream. Also, it's easier to talk when you actually have a plan. If I were to just go live and have no idea what I was doing, then it, it yeah, it'd be kind of hard. You just improvise, I guess. But I know that I'm going to play, be playing Roblox on this given day. And I, I don't know what the games are necessarily going to be other than that they're tower defense. I just play those games and I kind of react to them. You don't have to be good at games to be a good streamer. You don't have, I mean, it, it can help. Those, those are the only types of streamers, in my opinion, that can get away with saying nothing. The ones who are really good because people just come to their stream to be in awe or to pick up pointers and tips. Like it's not about the streamers, it's just about their skill. Whereas if, if you're anyone else, entertainment, funny, all those sorts of things, um, that takes practice. You have to do them. When starting streaming, is one day a week enough? Personally, I think that is fine. I think the best way to look at it is this. So the old advice, what? As far as how many days a week you should be streaming, the old advice was you should be streaming as much as possible so you can be live and people will find your channel and you know, you just gotta put in that grind, okay? 
please don't do that. Please, please. It's just so not necessary. Is there a chance more people will find you while you're live? Yeah, technically. I mean, if you're only streaming on Twitch, then they can only find you when you're live because people don't watch VODs. Twitch doesn't have an algorithm to show you. Though they are kind of getting better about it. Like they've changed their mobile app to function more similarly to a For You page, which some people kind of don't like. But for me, maybe it's a good idea. It's too early to judge. But that's besides the point. I think if you want to grow as a streamer, the best thing you could be doing is taking advantage of the platforms that do have algorithms. Think of every popular streamer you know of. You probably found them because you saw a YouTube video or you saw a short and they were doing something that you found valuable, that you liked, and you decided to go give their stream a chance. That had nothing to do with Twitch. That was all YouTube. That was all TikTok. Maybe Instagram. I can't really say I've ever had much success with Instagram. But we have had one person... This is going to sound really bad. <laughs> I've had one, two people actually from TikTok join the stream, okay? Uh, join the Discord as well, which I'm very grateful for. But I've also had over th like two and a half million views on my TikTok channel. Two out of two million is not a great stat if I'm being completely honest. If we're building a business here and trying to convert customers, two out of two million isn't, isn't a very good number. But streaming on YouTube has been fantastic, specifically vertical streaming because everyone likes to swipe through vertical shorts. So that's been the biggest sort of growth factor for me. Um, that doesn't really answer your question. How many days a week should you stream? Uh, you should stream as many days as will help you improve as a broadcaster because another big mistake I made earlier, early on was I went live on TikTok and TikTok gave me a big boost of viewers at the very beginning. But um, are we waiting for a good map? I'm just standing here neutral. But I was not really prepared to interact with, you know, 300 people that just got pushed to my stream. And they are very demanding. Like if you don't keep their attention in 0.5 milliseconds, it's kind of over for you. So that happened to me. I just kind of burned on that stream and they don't really give you that again. It's a lot of pressure, actually, if you go live on TikTok for the first time. So I recommend going live on Twitch without the intention of having any audience at all. Like just pretend you're entertaining a thousand people that aren't talking to you because radio hosts, they don't they don't really talk to people like they'll have listeners come on. But that's a direct interaction, like a phone call. You're not really engaging with chatters. So just pretend a thousand people are watching you and they're only listening to you talk to yourself. Kind of like Panda said a second ago uh, of talking to yourself. So that I think is what it's about. It's practicing. It's like not getting a Ferrari when you first learn how to drive. You just go live, you get your reps in, and then when you're ready to sort of upgrade your game and, uh, you know, focus on the marketing aspect of streaming, then that's when you decide, okay, I'm going to go live on YouTube. I'm going to do TikTok live. I'm going to post these short. And that's the other thing too, is when you start making videos, you start to learn what topics kind of matter and what uh, people care about. Because let's keep it real. They don't care about you at first. No, no one cares about you, right? Like everyone here, they saw I was playing Roblox and like, hmm, I'll give this guy a chance. He's a Roblox streamer. And then hopefully they're like, oh, he's kind of cool. We'll hang out in his stream. Uh, and if he doesn't play Roblox that day, hmm, I might not be interested, but maybe I will be because Rome is kind of cool. So you got to find the sort of gateway for people to come in. And for me, because I've been a teacher for six years, Roblox is the easiest thing for me. Just, you know, kind of helps. Like I said, not my favorite game, but streaming is, you know, there's a lot of things that it's not your favorite thing that you have to do, right? If, if you're thinking of it as a business, you know, it's like, what game is popular right now? I'm going to play that. Because it's going to help me. If you post YouTube videos, you post on Instagram. Too, that's how, I, I mean, they literally promote for you for free. It's kind of crazy. Social media is is a fantastic tool. I mean, it's not, it doesn't work 100% of the time. But if you're consistent enough, one, you'll get better. And two, one of those things will pop off. I can tell you from personal experience, like they, some things will do well. You definitely can't just go live on Twitch is all I'm saying. If you do it with the intention of having content that you edit afterwards, then 
that's great too. Also, keep in mind, when you do all these things, you're gaining valuable skills. Like you're learning how to be a broadcaster, you're learning how to be a video editor, you're learning how to market, you're learning how to sit on the grass in front of tents that are clearly too small for you. All these sorts of things. This is very depressing. What is this music? <laughs> 